Hello and welcome back to Adventures in Miniature. Today we're going to be painting up an Axis squad from Dust 1947. Now I've gotten a lot of my miniatures from eBay and I'm not actually sure exactly what these are. And I think what I've got here is part Endak Recon Squad and a hero called Stefan. But it's too late to turn back now, so let's get started. One of the things I love about this line of miniatures is that it's very much an alternative history diesel punk affair, which means that there's loads of great real world reference materials that you can use to inform your color choices. These guys have a mix of weapons that are very much inspired by the real world. To make sure I could get as much of the miniature as I could, I took the heads off and stored them in a container for later, and then I separated the torso from the legs. I used some liquid cement to make a good strong bond between the two pieces. Previously I've used liquid green stuff and super glue so I could smooth out the gap between the torso. But these ones fit together quite well so I didn't feel that stage was necessary. I started blocking out the basic colours, painting the main uniform in Death Corps Drab by Games Workshop. I really like to use this as a base military colour, especially for Axis Infantry. I think if I'd discovered this colour sooner I would have used it in a lot more miniatures I've painted up so far. I like to keep my colour schemes quite simple, which is something of a double-edged sword. It makes them really quick to paint, but if you do just leave it at basic layers, then they look quite plain. So what I like to do is a simple scheme and then add additional character with weathering like dirt and wear on the body armour. After that had dried, I went over the armour with GW's Mechanicus Standard Grey. It's a surprisingly similar colour to the Primed miniatures themselves, but once the drab has gone on, it's much easier to keep track of what you've done. It's time to go over the weapons and boots with black, which I'm going to use as a base for dry brushing later on. While the black was drying, I decided to have a bit of a basing experiment. Normally I use grout to create a churned up ground effect, but with the current situation I had to improvise a bit. So I mixed up some basing materials with some Mod Podge and worked that onto the bases. Once that had dried up, I painted over it with black, which I would come back to and add some detail into later. I think GW have an excellent range of metallics, and the one I use most for weapons is Lead Belcher. It's a fairly dark silver shade, which really helps to give you a used, slightly grimy look all the metallic parts and I love to use it for the guns in particular. Once the metallics are done I came back in to tidy up the base colours and add a bit more detail. I went with a simple black belt with a hint of lead belcher on the belt buckle. Sometimes you end up doing details so minute that no one's ever really going to notice them and this is what the studs on the armour were like for me. I spent a lot more time than I really needed to carefully painting the little studs on the shoulder pads, but sometimes you end up doing those details just for you, and that's just fine. When it came to the Panzerfaust, I wasn't quite sure what colour I wanted to use. One of the pitfalls of painting military inspired colour schemes is that everything ends up being a collection of drab greens with only the tiniest splash of colour. I ended up using Zandri Dust, which is an excellent desert brown colour. When it was done I decided to use a bit of corn red to paint a little red ring around the warhead. This helped add a little extra detail to the weapon without being too garish and standing out too much. I had a similar problem with the drum magazine for the MG15 and I ended up using Army Green from Army Painter which is almost exactly the same as GW's Death Guard Green. For the machine gun, in order to put a bit more character into it I decided to paint the grips to look like wood. One of my favourite brown colours to use is Army Painter's Oak Brown which to me is a wonderful dark rich brown colour that I think fits very well when doing furniture on World War II style weapons. While I had the oak brown out, I decided to go in and do the straps on the body armour. It's a little detail, but it's really satisfying to know it's done. With pretty much all the base colours done, it was time to start in on the weathering and little details. Discovering Typhus Corrosion was a complete game changer for me, and I love using it to add little bits of corrosion on the armour. I like to use a little bit of this on the armour rivets and on the edges of the armour, which would have been more exposed to the elements. I think of the dirt and grime as starting from the ground and moving up, so most of the weathering I apply usually 
starts at the lowest part and travels upwards. With the typhus corrosion on, I went back over those edges with a tiny bit of lead belcher to create a hint of exposed metal from the paint being chipped away. It's a great base metallic which you can either build up into something brighter or leave subdued which is what I'm quite fond of doing. When it comes to distressing the uniform, I like to use Army Painter Mummy Robes which is a great off-white colour. I find it does a really good job of picking out the folds in the uniform. This came out a bit bright at first, but I'm going to come back later and go over it with a green shade, which is going to dull it down a little bit and tie it more into the uniform. Most of the miniatures are wearing gloves, but the command model is barehanded, so I used Bugman's Glow to base the skin, which I then went over with a thin layer of Cadian Flesh Tone, followed by a flesh wash and then Kislev Flesh as a highlight. Washes are an awesome way to add depth into your painting. I found that they've really raised my painting game and it's really satisfying to see the washes go to work. Null Oil is a great general wash which I use on all my metallic parts and anywhere that I want to look a little bit grimy. After the washes are done, I'm going to move on to dirtying up the model to simulate how the unit might have been running or crawling through the mud. I like to imagine where dirt might build up, particularly around the knees, elbows and splashing up against the torso as he runs. I started out with the darkest brown and then worked my way up through Steel Legion Drab, which is an excellent mid-range brown, and then finally Zandri Dust for where the mud would have dried up. This is one of the things that I feel helps a simple colour scheme come to life. By adding those little bits of wear and dirt, you're helping tell a story of what that miniature you've been painting has been through and I think it helps to add a bit more life into each one. Especially with dry brushing, you don't have to be particularly precise for adding dirt. If anything, I think it helps a little to allow a little bit of random dirt to find its way into places you might not have deliberately chosen to paint. As long as it's in the right sort of area, it'll turn out fine. For the flamethrower, I wanted to make it look like the nozzle had been discoloured by the heat, so I dry brushed on a light coat of Rune Lord brass and then went over the very tip with a bit of black to look like soot and ash. Right, we're back onto the bases. Even though I'm planning to go over this with snow to finish it off, I still think it's important to put some colour underneath. I started out with oak brown and then dry brushed the whole thing with Zandri dust, which helps to pick out the rocks and finally went over the stones and bits of broken concrete with a light grey. I find having the Zandri dust underneath really helps to add a bit more dimension and warmth to the concrete as opposed to just being grey. For the gas mask, I initially thought I was going to use just a simple black, but in the end I decided to go with Rhinox Hide, which is a really dark brown that I usually struggle to find a use for, but in this case I think it was a good fit. So while the base black layer was drying, I used that time to apply the snow texture onto the bases. Since I started using my own texture paces, it's made me a lot less stingy with the application of texture. I think the end result came out well. I'm constantly trying to learn more and I've been really happy with how these bases have come out. After the Rhinox hide's gone on, I used a dark green to do the eye lenses and while it was still drying I tried to put a tiny dot of white in the corner, which I then tried to wet blend into the green to soften it out. While that was drying, I took some Steel Legion Drab to do the strap on the helmet. Again, it's a tiny detail, but it makes me happy to know that I took the, the extra minute to do it put the tiniest bit of dry brushing onto the gas mask and then I used a green wash on the eye lenses to soften the dots out a little bit more. I also used a little bit of Agrax Earthshade on the mask to soften out the highlight. The helmet's got some Mechanicus Grey and the same layers of brown to dirty them up a little bit. Once that was done, I went in to pick out the metallic parts of the gas mask with some more lead belcher. For the bare head, I used the same process as I did for the hands earlier, starting with a dark flesh tone and working my way up to the lighter tones and then using a wash to help pick out the detail.
little dab of glue to secure the heads and we're done. Overall this unit was really satisfying to paint. I found that the Axis infantry tends to come together really fast. They've got some really nice details on them that are satisfying to paint up. I think one of the things I like the most about Dust Miniatures is how they encourage you to take inspiration from real life references. Adding wear to the miniatures is really satisfying and it goes a really long way towards adding life and character to each model. Right then, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.